y'all ready to go to heaven? Amen. 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 Hey, I, I've got to share something. I was sitting there thinking about that beautiful song, but I just couldn't get it out of my mind. Have you ever heard that story about where the preacher, he said, how many y'all ready to go to heaven? Raise your hand. I like it. That's it. That's right. <laughs> you, you got my punchline, but that's all right. In case you had never heard it before. <laughs> In case you hadn't heard it before, there's one man never raised his hand. And that, that pastor, he grabbed him by the arm coming out of the church. He said, he said, brother, are you okay with the Lord? And he said, yeah. He said, well, why didn't you raise your hand? He said, well, it sounds like you was getting a bus up to go today. And I wasn't quite ready. So, but, uh, but I'll tell you, when our time comes, I know we will be ready. Amen? Amen. And praise God. And I'm excited to hear y'all sing about that city. Woo! I tell you, the Bible says that, that he's going, his, his foot is going to step on the Mount of Olives and it's going to split. And that city is going to come out of heaven and it's going to sit there. Oh, I don't know about you, but I think that gets me excited because I know what the Bible says because there will be a thousand years of peace here on earth. Woo! And the Bible says that we that be in Christ shall be ruling and reigning. Christ Jesus. I don't know what all that means, and I ain't going to get into theological doctrinal statements, but I'm going to tell you this. It means we're going to have a good time with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. So uh, I pray you start this morning. Now, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be hard for me to preach it up here this morning, focus. I'm not picking on you, Macy, but, but she's wearing a uniform that I like to see quite often, usually. And uh, so if, if I close you early today, it might be because it's time to run through the border. But uh, because I, I do go there, if you ever hear this voice on the intercom, uh, yes, I'll have a, a deal number four, no sour cream with Pepsi to drink. That is me, okay? So, uh, but anyway, we're just having fun, right? Which, uh, I love you, Macy. I'm proud of you. I really am. That's a, that is a blessing to see you. Uh, that's part of growing up. So, so don't let me embarrass you. Just let me tell you, I'm excited for you. But uh, if you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to 1 Kings chapter 17, we're going to look at verses 8 through 16 this morning. And if you can tell, there's a word up there that we're going to be talking about today. It's called trust. But uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. And while you're turning there, I'll just tell you, I've never heard a message out of this content about what we're going to talk about today. Uh, most of the time I've ever heard messages out of these verses, it's always about, number one, a giving program. Seriously, when we read these verses, you'll see them going. Or sowing into a ministry somehow, some way, shape, or prayer. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. And I pray today that the Lord will enlighten you. That's my prayer. He will enlighten you with this holy word. Let's begin. Begin in verse 8. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. And he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I have gathered two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat, eat it and die. Turn the page. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast, thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. And thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The bearer of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and, she and, he and her house did eat many days, and the bearer of meal wasted not, Neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke or spake by Elijah. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Lord, I, I already thank you for a moving of your Holy Spirit in this place this morning. I know, Lord, we are in the presence of Jehovah. And so, Lord, I'm just going to ask for your help this morning. You know I can't do this. You know, Lord, I tell you all the time, help me because 
There's no way possible for me to do anything with your word. It'll have to be you. So Lord, I pray for me that you'll anoint me. And I pray that you'll anoint this message to speak to your people's hearts. Lord, I pray for people's ears this morning. I pray that they be awakened this morning, that they hear. I pray for people's eyes this morning, the eyes of their spirit, that they would be awakened, Lord, to see. But I pray most importantly that they hear and see you, Lord Jesus, and that your name be lifted up so they will be drawn unto you and all the things that you have that, are, that you're holding in your hand for their life. And it's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. I, uh, I have a couple verses to go with this to kind of set off. Can you go to the next screen, Carson? You'll have to go slow, so we'll stop there. We're going to read this. When you see it's right there in front of you, you'll have to turn. This is in Psalm 33, verse 21. It says, For our heart is glad in Him because we trust in His holy name. Will you go to the next one? It says, I love this. I don't know if, if you've got a favorite verse. It's one of my favorite verses. This is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. Now today I'm going to be talking about trusting, and I want you to realize the Bible talks many times about trusting in the Lord. But in our day, in our society, we have a problem. Will you go to the next slide? This is the common phrase of most people in society today. Matter of fact, the other day I was having a conversation with this lady, and uh, she was telling me about her travel. She saw a, a person that was semi-crippled trying to get through in the rain. But she knew because of the day that we live in, you do not, as a single woman, pick up a man on the side of the road. And so she wanted to. She really did. But we continue to talk about in this day and time, we have to be careful about trusting people. And one of the phrases of today's society is to trust no one. And it goes on usually to say, but yourself. And so that is a, is a state that we're in today. And so I'm praying. Because here's what happens. Usually what goes on in society, slowly and, sure, uh, slowly and easily and quietly, it usually creeps into the culture of the church. And so today I want to address the issue of trust. You can trust one that we know. And you can trust His children because they live according to His Word. So the one that we know who is the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to know, today you can put your trust in Him. Everything else might look like a spelling out there, but He will never fail you. People will fail you always, but Jesus never will let you down. You can always trust Him. That's a guarantee. He's been that way from the beginning. He'll be that way to the end of these days and forevermore. That's His Word. We can trust in Him. And so when we look at this today, how is this going to pertain to the Scriptures? Um, will you put the next slide up? I want you to realize that my wife told me a couple years ago, she said, have you ever looked at the word trust? It starts with the cross and it ends with the cross. And so today I want you to get hold of that because as I talk to you just for the next few moments, I want you to realize... All about trust has to do with the crosses. But today I want us, as we look at the Scripture, I want you to realize how they really work in yours and my life. Uh, matter, of fact, I, matter of fact, just go ahead to the next one. Let's see what that is. I, I made this little thing up and put it on there because uh, a lot of times if, if we look at words and we examine them, I did what my wife said, or kind of said looking at, I put the cross before and I put the cross at the end. And see, a lot of us are the big you in between. Matter of fact, there's a lot of you sitting here today, you trusted in the cross for your beginning of life in Him, and you trusted in Him at the end of your days, just like that song that we sang about, to take you on to glory. But you and I, we live right in the middle. We are the you in between those two crosses. And so everyday life is very important and it has a lot to do with trusting in the Lord. In the text that I just read to you this morning, it's amazing because you've got two issues of trust that are running parallel. I hope you see this because get this. Here you've got number one, the man of God who is trusting God and he is by faith, only entrusted in him and his word. He has gone to Seraphim and he's there and he is trusting God that that widow lady that he promised would be there. Next he speaks to this woman and she has to trust too. And so it's a parallel. 
And all, all through the Bible, you'll see parallels that run. As a matter of fact, but the amazing thing is, is that those parallels are on different planes. I don't want to get too far into maths and all this stuff, but it's amazing how things just divinely work, that God sets in action, and how on different levels... God is working. And the Bible says He's working all things out to the good of those that love Him and are called according to His purpose so that we know if we're in those plans of His, He is working all things out and we can trust Him. But the amazing thing is, is, is how God usually works. I got for number one, well, let, me, let me give you this. Listen to Webster. This is the 1913 edition. Hello, we are traveling back 100 years. Listen to the definition of trust. It is that upon which confidence is reposed and ground of reliance or hope. He even quotes in there Psalm, get this, this is amazing, Psalm 71, verse 5. O Lord, Thou art my trust from my youth. Isn't that amazing? But I'm going to tell you, you know what you need to do, guys? You need to go back and get you an old dictionary. Because the world is slowly creeping into everything. And language is changing. But he defines there what truly trust is all about. So I want to talk to you about how it begins in these scriptures. It starts out little. Number one, trust always begins small. And by the way, that one I put on there, trust no one. The sad thing is today is I read a couple of little things that said, it said trust is built over a long term. But it can be, it can be destroyed in a matter of minutes. In just a few seconds, all trust can be destroyed between humans. But with God, our trust, we can bank on eternity. So, so when we look at things, I know there's a, there's a way to look at things in the way we live in, but we got to look in a spiritual way too. We can trust Him. He's not a man that He would lie. Everything He said, it is for our benefit. It is for those that will trust in Him, everything He's written. But it always begins, trust always begins small. As a matter of fact, look in verse 10 of the text we read this morning. It says, it says, So arose he, he went to Zarephath, and when he came uh, to the gate of the city, behold, uh, the widow woman was there gathering of the sticks, and he called to her and said, Now listen, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water. Trust always begins in a little matter. The amazing thing is, is that here she is, in that day and time, let me just stop for a minute and tell you, they're in a drought. <laughs> they hadn't had any rain. For I don't know how many days. The Bible doesn't give us a time frame for where this happens. But they had had any But here's what she knew. Apparently because of the way water is stored up and the way it's kept, she knew that to go find water was not an impossible thing. So the number one way that I believe for you and I that God begins to bring us on this journey of trust is He begins with something small. Very small. It is something that we know we can obtain. It's something we know we can do. It's something that is not out of the, uh, not way out of order. And we realize that, hey, that's possible. Now, I want to share something with you because as I was studying this verse, uh, these verses, I began to look through the Bible because God just started taking my mind to several episodes. And I, I made uh, little notes because in Genesis chapter 24, Abraham is at the end of his days. Isaac is born and, and uh, Sarah has passed away. And so he tells in chapter 24 of Genesis, he tells his chief servant, Eleazar, to go to his hometown in Nahor and to find a bride for Isaac. And if you know the scriptures, you know when he gets there, the first thing he asks, a little bit, a small thing, is he asks for a little drink of water. And sure enough, the one he asked for would happen to be Rebecca. It would happen to be the bride of Isaac. How about this? Jesus in John chapter 4 is sitting on a well in Samaria and a lady comes up and what does he ask of her? Give me a little drink. Man, have you ever realized all the parallels that is in God's Word? How things, they don't just happen once. They reoccur. And as they reoccur, they have defining meanings. They have defining essence to them for you and I to grab a reality of what He's trying to tell us. So we see all through the Scriptures that God always begins with small ways to ask us to trust Him. But He never stops there. My second, my second point. The next step is always bigger. My friend, you can come today and you can trust Jesus Christ. Trust Him enough to open your heart up. And He will come in and live inside of you. I believe that is one of the essence of beginning in trust with the Lord. But from there it always gets bigger. 
With God, you got to remember something. God's a big God. Somebody say amen. amen. God is so big. Listen, we can't contain. Isaiah said, he says in Isaiah chapter 6, he said, Behold, he saw the Lord in the, in the day of the Lord, and he saw, he saw the king in the day of the Lord, and his train filled up the sanctuary. The train of the Lord will fill up this place, and it won't even hold it. That's just a train of him. That's not to begin to even mention his glory, his holiness, all the attributes about him, but everything about God is big. So he begins with something small, but then he always, next step people, pay attention, because I believe this is where a lot of people miss the boat. Because he always asks for something bigger. Next. Look in verse 11. He says, she's going, well, I lost my place. Here we go. In verse 11, she said, uh, so as she was going to fetch it, the small, the small asking, the next one is, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread. I want to, God always knows the bigger picture. Not only in your household, but in you. He asked for what is an impossible, almost an impossible thing for her to give. You know this is something small he starts with. But the next thing is always something bigger. In yours and my life, the first thing he asks is for us to receive it. The next thing he asks is for us to give our life to him. But here we find in the context, he's always pressing for something that is very big in yours and my life. Back in Genesis chapter 24. Is that right? Yeah. I don't want to give you the wrong places. Back in Genesis chapter 24, he, he listen, he first asked for water. When he gets into her house, he asks for her to be the bride. It always goes bigger. How about this? Jesus. When he asked for the lady in Samaria in John chapter 4, when he asked for the drink of water, and they go through all this explanation they found it on, on the living water, the next thing he says, go and tell thy husband. See, he's always about a bigger picture. There's always another step in the episode of trust. In our lives, listen, on a normal day-to-day -day basis with human beings, listen, trust is always a stepping stone. It is always progressing. And then like that one quote or whatever, in, in moments it can be destroyed. But there's always steps. But with Jesus Christ, He begins with small. But then He will always move to what is big in your eyes, in your house, or in your life. And we've got to realize something. There's a reason for this. Because, um, okay, I, I'll just, I'm, I'm, just wait a minute, I'll tell you. I'll bite it on the next slide because it's just phenomenal. God just showed me some stuff that was so powerful about this word trust. And I pray, I pray it's going to be like, a, like how I loaded on that computer. It's going to load up in your mind and in your heart and it's going to do something for you. But let me go to the third point and then we'll get it. The third point is trust always leads to a greater experience in our relationship with God. You see, so we start at phase one and it's small. Then the next step is always much bigger. But in the move of the next bigger step of trust, there's always something great that happens in our relationship. As a matter of fact, in Genesis chapter 24, Rebecca, now listen, listen to the great experience that happened to her. She would be married in the heir to the, all of, of uh, Abraham's uh, basic lineage. She would become not only the mother to Israel, she would become the mother to the lineage of Jesus Christ. But if you can't see how awesome that is, I mean, come on, that's amazing. Because not only did when she trusted with the little thing with the water, then she trusted in the marriage part, and then all of a sudden, you know, what comes into reality after the trust issue, it's amazing how everything, God just begins to move in a relationship and in an order and a way that's never been experienced before. How about Jesus? When he's in John chapter 4, when he asked that lady, uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, and she goes... She asked, he asked for the water. Then he talks about her husband. Then listen to her final comment. She says in verse 29, Come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be Christ? You see, it's always progressing. It's always much better. See, she began with a controversial question about a drink of water. Who he began to reveal about something that's very big in her life that he really wanted to deal with. And he wanted her to trust her. And then it ended up as her seeing him as Jesus the Messiah. Boy, isn't that awesome? I pray somebody's getting something this morning. Because if you begin to see in Scripture how things operate and are in order, then you can look in your life. 
You can see where God began with a little issue and a little thing of trust. You can see in day-to-day -day adventures where God is asking you to do this, to trust Him here and to trust Him there. And it's always growing us into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. Can you go to the next slide? Next. There we go, the cross. So in the word trust, we've got the cross. I'll explain that. We, if you have not met Jesus Christ, the beginning of your trust in the Lord is where you meet Him. It is where you find Him at Calvary, where He hung on the cross for yours and my sins so that we can become uh, in fellowship with God Jehovah, the, the Creator of all things. The next one, R. The next one, you. The next one, sure. And then the last one, it's the other cross. You see, when you are sure about the cross, you will do what you've never done before because you will trust God. You see, there's a reason why we don't do what we're supposed to do. There's a reason why we don't live the way we're supposed to live. There's a reason why we're not obedient to the Word of God. It's because, number one, are you sure? You are not sure about the cross you trusted or the cross that will carry you because you're stuck in the middle and you are on a journey to find out if you really are sure. Okay, there's a guy on, on the radio. He says, marinate on that. You see, there's a reason why we don't trust. See, every time we come to issues in life where God asks for more, where He wants us to trust more, it's all about you in the middle of the two crosses, and it's always the question, are you sure? You see, your response always is in accordance to what you are sure about. Matter of fact, you came in, you sat down on those pews, you had no problem being sure that they would hold your weight. Why? Because you know by trials and experiences that, hey, these are, these are handcrafted uh, benches, they're made out of solid oak, and they've got a nice pad on the bottom, and for you nice people in the back, it's on your back too. But you know that by experience, by the trials that you've had in your life of coming in, sitting down, you know you can depend on it, and you are sure about sitting there. But what about in a God you cannot see with your physical eyes? The only way that we ever become sure about the cross we began to believe in and the cross that we believe at the end that will carry us through all eternity is that in every day of our life, proving that we are sure of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know about you, but I got, so, I got so excited about this because I've just wondered how many people... Listen, you're just not sure. I've been there. So I know what I'm talking about. I was scared to step out and do what I knew I should do. I'd been taught what I was supposed to do. The Word said I was supposed to do. But I was scared to do it because I didn't know if I was sure of what I believed in and all the cross to do what it says. But it's proved all through history that when we trust the Lord, He always comes through. You see, I, I don't know where you are this morning. I'm not through with the message yet. But you may have a problem trusting God right now with your, your family. You may have a problem trusting God with your children. You may have a problem trusting God with your workplace. You may have a problem trusting God in, in everything. I don't say your finances, but it's everything. You may have a problem somewhere, and the real truth of why you're having a problem is because you haven't found out how to truly trust a cross that will carry you all through everything so that you will be sure of the cross that will carry you through all of eternity. And the reason I know that is because I've been there. I still have days when I say, are you sure? I still have times when I'm asking God, are you sure? But I believe God is casting it back in our lap this morning to ask you, are you sure? You see, are you sure about the cross you profess that you believe in? Are you sure about... Come on, some people will trust God with their eternity and they won't trust Him right now with their everyday life. If you could trust Him to carry you through the ages and to see that city and that one day you're going to be, why can't you trust Him right now on planet Earth? He's the same God that will be there when you get there because He's the same God that was there when you found Him there and He's the same God today that will help you right where you are. Are you sure? 
I said, title of my message today, Truth, are you sure? Because I'm going to tell you, God wants to show you things that you could never imagine that He can do. He says He will show us exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ever hope, dream, or even imagine. But we must be willing to trust first. If you'll go to the next one, it should have it all together. Because I wonder, are you sure? Listen to this testimony. Over 200 years ago, there were some Welch missionaries that went to a place called Gairo in Assam. And there was a husband and a wife with two boys that they witnessed <laughs> to by the Lord Jesus Christ. It's come out of the Welch revival. And they witnessed to them, and they shared Jesus. And these people believed. And a matter of fact, they began to believe so much that they themselves began to be missionaries in that same tribal town or city or village where they lived. The chief was always known for realistically harshly dealing with any retaliations. And he was very cruel. It was usually a life or death matter when someone disagreed with him. And so they, they are put in a place, this husband, his wife, and his two boys, where the chief calls them out and he tells them to deny Christ. And I'm going to read, listen, it says, When asked for their reply, the father stated, I have decided to follow Jesus, and there is no turning back. So the men that were there to carry out the chief's instructions, they had bow and arrows, and they drew back their bows, and they took the two boys' lives. The chief stands up again and tells the, 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 the husband and the wife to renounce Christ. They were reported to have said, Though no one joins me, still I will follow. It says the archers drew back. And they took the wife's life. They took aim at the father. And he was asked again. And it said that he was reported to have said, The cross before me, the world behind me. And they shot him. It was later renowned, renowned in that village because the chief saw the conviction of who this man trusted in. That he not only came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, but that whole village was converted. George Beverly Shea, later the songwriter, would take an Indian song and convert it for what they would hear for years. In the Billy Graham's crusade. You know it well. You've heard it. I was singing it all morning. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. To follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have this one. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 5, we'll say it like this in the English, English Standard Version. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight, and sin that clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider Him who endured for sinners such hostility against Himself, so that you may, grow, not, you may not grow weary or faint-hearted, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of the shedding of your blood. My friend, I want you to know something today. There's a cross at the beginning. There's you in the middle. And there's a cross at the end. You know, today, if you're sitting here and you've never began 
with the cross, the first place you can trust the Lord. I want to encourage you today. If He's dealing with your heart and you realize that you never truly trusted Him with the first one, by opening your heart and letting Him come in, my prayer is that you will pray. I'm not going to say a simple prayer, but a, a prayer that is not so hard to understand that you say, Lord, forgive me. I've missed your marks. And I have truly failed. But I know you can come in and forgive me. And I can trust you with all of my life. If you, said a, if you say a prayer like that, my friend, you mean it with all your heart. And the Bible says he comes in. But what about the Christian that's began with the cross? What about you that's anticipating the last cross? Where are you in the walk of life? The question is, are you sure? You trust Him. Are you sure in your life that all of your trust is in Him and in Him alone? Father, we thank you for your words today. We thank you, Lord, for... Lord, I just thank you for your Holy Spirit. In this room. Lord, if there be one here today that doesn't know you, my prayer is, Lord, even right now while we're praying, they will call on your name. Lord, I know all it takes is just a mention of your name. With an open heart to trust you. I know what your word says, that you come in. And they're born from above. But Lord, for the Christian, the city... And they're the big you in between the crosses. And maybe today they've got issues. They're saying they're not really sure about it. Lord, I pray today that you will minister to them. Lord, we need the ministering of your Holy Spirit. He is the one that encourages us. He is the one that lifts us up. He's, he's called to come along beside us with paraclete and to help us to trust you. And so Lord, whatever a person may be going through, wherever they may be at that point between the crosses, Lord, I pray today, before they leave, that they are sure about the things of you and about the trust so, Father, whatever the need is, I know by your word, you're more than able to take care of it. Lord, for the person that may not know you, praise God, you're the only one that can introduce them to new life. Lord, whatever the need is, I pray, Lord, today, touch your people. Touch your people. Christian. Let them know. They can trust you. For Jesus' sake. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Will you stand with us? We're going to have a hymn of invitation. It's a simple invitation. If you're a you in between two crosses, or if you're a you outside never seen the cross to start with, this invitation is for you. So realistically, that covers any person. But I encourage you. Trust them. Let everyone know that you are sure. Are you ready, brother?
it is before you. And here's what I know. The Bible says He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's right there beside you. All you have to do is call on His name. Where's Mr. Bill Baggins? He's sitting over there. Would you close this in prayer, brother? And I pray. And just pray for a blessing on His people as they go out today, if you don't mind.